I wanted to shoot a quick follow-up video for yesterday's video that I put up about manufacturing and OEM and all those types of things because there are a lot of the comments were like, do you have anything made in the USA? Why don't you support US manufacturing? Can't you just move that stuff? The fact of the matter is you really can't. It's a lot more involved than most people realize to get something like stainless steel cookware or even titanium for that matter manufactured in the US. It is it would cost millions of dollars in startup costs to even try to do that. And you'd have to offset that hopefully in the future with sales. And it's a very difficult thing. But what I do do is I support American manufacturing and manufacturing in other countries as best I can with good products. 40% probably of our inventory is either made in the US, somewhere in Europe or in Scandinavia. So I do support manufacturing from other countries as well as within the US. And a lot of the stuff that we carry on our website is made by US cottage makers. I work with small makers all the time. Uh, Nick Stoll, Badger Claw Leatherworks, Duluth Pack. They're not really a small maker, but they are an American maker. Um, I work with Leatherman Tools. We work with lots of knife companies that are US based knife companies. And most of those knives are made right here in the USA. Not all of them, but most of them. So I try to support that manufacturing as best I can. And if I can find a maker, a smaller cottage maker, those are the guys I really try to support because they're a small business and I have a large reach. So I try to bring their product into my line so that I can give them my reach to help them sell their product. Generally, I don't put my name on those products or brand it as a Pathfinder brand. I leave it branded by the maker who makes it, whether it's Badger Claw, Nick Stoll, um, Habilis Tools, whoever it is that's a US, U.S. manufacturer, I try to leave their name on the product. The problem that you run into with a lot of that stuff, and in, in all transparency and honesty, is being able to keep up with supply and demand. And that affects your SEO standings on Google. So there's some understanding that you have to have of the workings of the internet and how things work there as well. Because if you have a lot of out of stocks all the time and people are searching those out of stocks, it drops your SEO rankings on Google. And that's a problem for a business as well. So you have to be kind of give and take with that stuff and figure out what you can buy that you can keep on the shelf or at least keep a steady supply coming in so that it's not out of stock all the time. And sometimes with smaller makers, that's the difficulty. Not always, but sometimes. I wanted to show you a perfect example of a new product that nobody's even seen yet. It hasn't even been released yet that I've been working on for upwards of six, seven, eight months now, probably somewhere in that neighborhood, from a US manufacturer, a small cottage maker, who makes products out of DCF, uh, Cuban fiber, which is a, a, a very durable, ultra lightweight material that's used for making tarps and bags and even backpacks and tents nowadays. But this product is being manufactured or these products are being manufactured in the US. So I kind of wanted to highlight them today for you just as an example of yes, we do try to work with US makers whenever possible. So we brought all this cookware in this titanium. And when I brought that in, I decided that we wanted to have some type of an ultralight container or bag to put that stuff in. You don't buy ultralight material to put it in canvas. It's kind of counterintuitive. So I wanted this composite Dyneema fiber or Dyneema composite fiber, excuse me, this DCF to be made to fit that material. So what I did was I got with this maker who's in Arizona and he's making a bag that's made out of camouflage DCF material that's ultra light, ultra strong that fits the bush pot and the skillet inside. You can see there's the bush pot and the skillet nest below that with the lid for my bottle and cup set nested underneath. And then inside the bush pot is generally where I keep my stove and my fuel. And there's a separate small Dyneema Cuban fiber bag in here that he's manufacturing as well in the U.S. that holds a cigarette lighter, a mini bick, and it holds the titanium stove as well and an O-ring. So all of those things are stored inside that Dyneema bag, also made by the same manufacturer. And then he's also working on right now for me a food bag made out of the same fiber, cube, uh, made out of the same DCF material as camouflage that will hold all of your food for the trail to the top of your backpack. So all of it's in one bag that zips open from the top, almost like a ditty bag, so that you can get to your food very easily. But again, that's American manufactured, American made. 
He's also working on a backpack for me, an ultra light DCF backpack that weighs, I mean, this thing weighs virtually nothing. I don't know what the exact weight of it is right now. This is not the final product. This is only a prototype in a off color of green. The final production model of this pack will be black. We're making some changes to some of the things on them. I'm not real fond of all this netting. So we're getting rid of that and we're putting actual pockets there instead, which will increase the weight a little bit. But because this fabric is ultra light to begin with and ultra strong, it's not gonna hurt it any. There's been lots and lots of through hikers that have carried packs made out of this material an entire through hike through the Appalachian Trail. And it's been good to go coming out the other side. So I have a lot of faith in this Dyneema Cuban fiber and I've been using it for things like tarps and a bag for my bush pot ever since we started to work with the, the titanium bush pot. And I've used it for a tarp in Scandinavia, Italy, as well as the US for the last two years. And it holds up really, really well. So we do work with American manufacturers. I do try to get things made in the US when it's possible. And sometimes that means getting peripheral products made that aren't the cookware. So the cookware may be made in China, but the bags and things that go with that cook set to put in your backpack are going to be made in the US. So I wanted to kind of make a follow-up video on that today to let people know, yes, I do strive to find American manufacturing for things. Unfortunately, cookware is not something we're good at in the US and it would cost millions of dollars to try to start up a factory to make cookware in the US. Is there cookware that's made in the US? I think there probably is. I actually found a set of stainless steel pots that were not outdoor pots, they were actually kitchen pots that say they're made in the USA and they were $300 for three pots. And or a pot and two skillets, excuse me, $300. So the cost offset of that is humongous. And as much as people say, I would pay more money for it if I could buy it in the US, are you gonna pay the difference between a $15 skillet and a $100 skillet because it's made in the US? Somehow, intuitively, I doubt that that's gonna be the case with the majority of people and I have to market to everyone. I can't just market to the people who have money to burn and I can't just market to the people who don't have any money at all or are on a very low budget. I have to market to everyone in between that spectrum. So I try to do that the best I can. And unfortunately, cookware is something that's going to probably continue to be made in Asia until someone opens a factory somewhere else and contacts me and says, hey, I can make that stuff for you. Because I can promise you, if someone called me tomorrow and said, I have a manufacturing plant in Arkansas that can make stainless steel cookware and I'll make it for you at a reasonable price and I can keep up with your demand and I can make a thousand pieces on a run, what do you think? I'm gonna jump on that. Until that time comes, I've gotta stay with what I already have and go with what I know works for me and has worked for us in the past because supply chain issues are a problem. Yes, they've gotten worse with the whole COVID thing, even overseas, and it takes longer to get things than it used to take. And that explains some of our out of stock issues on things like stainless steel, because it takes four to six months to get a run. So the faster something sells out, the longer it's out of stock. That's just the way the ball bounces when it comes to manufacturing and supply chain issues, especially when you're dealing with things overseas. But it can be just as slow in the US when the manufacturing is a lot slower on some things and the makers or the manufacturing facilities are a lot smaller. So you have to take all those things into consideration. But what I wanted you to understand with this video is I do try to source things in the US and my company tries to source things in the US the best we can to support American makers and sometimes that just takes a little thinking outside the box to figure out how we can do that, like with this Dyneema Cuban fiber products that we're working on right now. The other thing that I try to do to support small businesses in America is I wear their products and use their products quite often, even if I can't carry them on my website. You know, and I don't make any money because I do that. I wear a Lester River Boyle Bushcraft shirt or field jacket all the time. I love Jason Gustafson. I've been friends with him for probably 10 or 12 years. And so all my instructors and myself, we wear his products. I don't charge him any money for doing that. But anytime somebody asks me, where'd you get that wool coat? Where'd you get that wool coat? Lester River, Lester River, Lester River. I'm trying to support his business. The same thing with this new hoodie that I get questions about. I say new, but it's a little old and beat up now. But this hoodie that I wear every day, this camouflage wooby hoodie from Perseverance Survival, I get upwards of 20 questions a day across four media platforms on where I got this jacket. So I'm not making any money off this jacket. I'm not selling this jacket. 
He sent me this jacket and I didn't pay anything for it. But beyond that, I'm just giving him business, giving him business because I want to support small businesses in America. So those are just a couple of examples, but I do that kind of stuff quite often and it's kind of behind the scenes and maybe people don't see it. So I'm bringing it to the forefront now so that you know I do support an American business the best I can. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our family. For our... See, I mess that up every once in a while. You guys just don't think I do. I thank you for everything you do for my family, for my business, for all my sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Have a good Sunday. Sunday.